Hello, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. So tonight, uh, we're going to talk a, a bit about the five elements. But first, a couple of things came up and uh, like to discuss. One thing is, uh, Jonathan had some uh, had some thoughts about his personal experience regarding the uh, the work we're doing, particularly the whole body sense of energetic coherence. So JB, take it away. You need to unmute. You need to unmute. Uh, unmute. You're, you're still un, you're still muted. I'm clicking <laughs> unmute. Oh, now oh, okay. you hear me. Ah. I got you. Okay, good. You got me. Yes. Okay. I have to stop looking at me as I'm talking. Um, so <laughs> fascinating. <laughs> we all know the drill here, right? Yeah. <laughs> we all know the drill here, you know, you point, you come into the balls of the feet, you know, the back of the, the crown of the head there comes up and, uh, and immediately, right, for most of us now, right, we, you know, there's a rush of, of just good feeling, the energy's flowing more, whatever that means. But the tendency then is to feel all that's rushing inside us like a river, and we're, our body outline is the banks of that river. And so we're just kind of focused, you know, from that boundary in. And what I want to suggest is that all of these points that Rick is uh, this outline from the ball of the foot to the finger, the uh, index finger, the elbow, which is really not even a reaching. It's really just almost like a slight contact with the outer and the chin. And the, once you make all those contact points and feel all that energy, it's you actually can get an expanded feeling of what your the outline of your body is. So it's no longer just banks and a river. It's like you're, it's not exactly dissolving, but it's, it's integrating with the space outside your body is the only way I can say it, but still the outline of your body. And what I'm saying is I've been doing this a lot. This is this business of practice a thousand times a day, not like, oh, it's, it's 10, 1030 time to practice the Tai Chi alchemy. No, it's like whenever, you know, and often when you find yourself in a twisted or tight or argh, say, look where your body is and go from there. And then go to your mind, go to your body first. If, if anything I've learned from Rick for 30 years, it's trust, go to the body. So, and, and then, you know, you can go right to Rick's point, even from this position, as Rick would often, you know, you can point, you can do your elbow, you can do, you can, you can start accessing it. But even when you're not in a kind of worried, tortured state, just stand there and just assume the position 100, 100 times a day, easily, for just a moment or two, and just redefine what it is to have a body and that body's relation to space. It's that mm. radical and that simple at the same time. Thank you, that's beautiful, thank you. Yeah, one of the, the things that you know, Jonathan is talking about here is the awareness that our sense of self does, doesn't stop with, with the meat. We, uh, we're not, you know, we're these nice, in and case bags of water, but there's actually a sense of being that is that exceeds the limitations of our physicality. And as we as we become more and more familiar with the process that I've been outlining, you become more comfortable with the insubstantial with the stuff, the, the non-stuff of life that is as much a part of who and what we are as the stuff. And um, so that, that sense of having a, a field, being a field that is, that it doesn't stop with your skin, but kind of expands outward. And you know, what you know, traditionally was called an aura you know, or an etheric field or an etheric body, or there's uh, a number of names for it, but it's a, uh, there's a sense of, oh yeah, at, you're basically as big as you can feel comfortable. The, the space that you feel safe in is the size that you are. And it requires cranking up the chi to a pretty high level to be able to fill up this so that you got enough left over to, uh, to 
expand. So the and the and the Chinese uh, term for it is uh, Wei Qi or external Qi, and it's it, that's that's where we are radiating. We become radiant beings, and we are bumping up against the outside, and that uh, that enables us to it um, to make a connection to this viscous fluid that is that permeates everything and we bump up against that and there is a capacity there to to exchange energy and information that is not limited to the narrow parameters of our conscious mind we actually expand beyond that into a, a knowing that far exceeds the uh, the limitations of what we can think about and that's where the fun begins the other, the practical advantage of this Wei Qi is that it's it is said to shield off pernicious influences. So you, by having, if your Qi is substantial enough that you have this, it's almost like a force field that kind of filters out bad stuff and that enables you to be healthier. So the, um, so requires, getting this energy cranked up enough so that you're comfortable with it. You're comfortable having enough of it. Jonathan's right. You, have, you can't just do this, you know, a few minutes a day. You got to just keep after it and not just like, okay, now it's my time to practice. This is like, no, it's something you're doing over and over and over again. You know, a thousand times a day, you're reaching with your elbows, you're pointing your fingers, you're reaching with your crown, whatever. And each time you do that, you put more in the bank and you build this foundation of energetic substantiality, this energy density that enables you to identify more and more, progressively more with your chi. And then you go beyond that to beyond chi. The chi is just an, an intermediate step. So then we get into what the Chinese call shen or spirit. So we move beyond the chi and into that which governs the chi. And so these are stages. And that's why they, um, you know, they considered Taiji Tran as a spiritual path, because it enables us to, to follow this thing. First, you control the, you know, they said they call it the lower soul, the, uh, the, um, uh, the shin, the heart mind which is the, the, the emotional mind. And it's the, the non-coherent part of, of our being. And then we move up into the E, which is the wisdom mind. And then beyond that into Shen or spirit. And we start to then be able to function from that place. And, but it comes from getting more and more comfortable with the insubstantial, with the non-stuff. So uh, before we go on, any uh, any questions, thoughts on that? Anybody? Richard. Um, as we're talking about this, I, I'm thinking of the, the ironies between feeling confident expanding your own entity and how that's related to your feeling of threat from someone coming into your space. It seems to me that the more I have uh, felt my personal space expand, the less likely I am to feel anxious about someone coming into that space. It feels like that space is stronger. And I know in working with you over the years and some of the uh, marvelous exercises that you've shown us that uh, it seems as though someone can come and wrap themselves around your personal space without you feeling threatened by it. Um, so I just thought that I'm just thinking of the ironies of that because you know in the last say quarter century, this issue of personal space, guarding your personal space, how far out does your personal space go depending upon your relationship with the people in the environment, you know that's occupied a lot of uh, uh, professional development and training. Um, so I'm, I'm sort of interested in that feeling that that as my 
personal as my own feeling of space expands it gives me confidence more confidence less threat about uh intrusions into that space i i think that's uh well stated richard thank you that uh, um and and it's a good observation so you know if our if you consider your personal space that area where you feel safe in then the more you feel safe the, the bigger your space can be. And what happens is when you do that and you're feeling safe in that space, you become more coherent. There's a state of wholeness, which then tends to attract other coherences to you. So the energies that, that, that you attract are more likely to be of the coherent variety. It's not a guarantee, but it, it, it is. But the other thing is that as you are feeling that expanded awareness that comes with that expanded space, you can spot trouble before it before it it, it jumps out at you. You know this is uh, what we you know the um, uh, understanding jinn is uh, the you know that is the uh, the jinn of understanding the jinn of of being able to identify energies, interpret them and know immediately the exact right energy to, to deal with that situation, oftentimes happening many times a second, so that you defuse conflict before it, it ever begins. And uh, I think that is part of that, that thing that you are having experientially, Richard, that is, uh, I think, all of us share to some degree. That said, yeah, the more coherent I get, the bigger my field, the better life is, huh? And there, and with that is because we attract more coherence to our to our um, ourselves as we as we engage life from that perspective. Anybody else? Valerie. I feel that as you, um, uh, lack of a better way to put it, lift your vibration in your field, you know, expanding yourself out, that you then can affect those that are coming into your field and lift their vibration. You know, it's, it's like if you walk into a room and two people say you have just had an argument you know it you don't even have to look at their faces you feel that in this in in the room uh, you can choose to stay or walk away um so conversely you know if you're lifting the vibration around you you draw people into that higher vibration hopefully no it it, 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 it experientially i mean something we've all observed that you know we all have met someone who either by their presence bums you out or lifts you up and uh it doesn't you know it's and it is our responsibility to uh to export good vibes because it's uh, <laughs> uh we you know i think it's really important at this stage of humanity's development to become coherence exporting systems, the coherent energy exporting systems that we need to send out the good vibes because the world needs it now, you know, what the world needs now. And uh, uh, I think that's, that, that's it. And so uh, uh, similarly, you know, if just know that if you're, if you're having a bad day and you choose to share that with the world, you know, you, that's what you're exporting, you know, and uh, just know that and, and uh, uh, be uh, aware of its effect and take responsibility for whatever, whatever decision you make. Uh, anybody else? Sharon. Just to comment, um, Valerie, 
Uh, what you were saying, sometimes I use that as a tool for my own self-evaluation. If I see who's attracted to me hmm. and it makes me look at myself. Hmm. Using life as a mirror. Say, yeah, okay, this is this is what <laughs> this is what I'm pulling in right now. So yes, good. Okay. Um Scott had a, a question, wanted to ask, ask for a clarification about the crown of the head, the knee wand, and the jade pillow gate. And um, I think uh, your, your question was along the lines that it's all producing the same effect. What's, why separate the, uh, the, the different components out? Is that right, Scott? Okay, good. So, um, so just to clarify what we're talking about here, the crown of the head is this part of the head right here. Okay, it's right around the the hair whorl. Okay, and it is that's um, uh, when I say to lift from the crown of the head or to reach for the crown of the head, that means that you actually kind of reaching upward, but you're not using muscular force to do it. So just like when you reach with your index finger, sometimes you, when you reach with the, uh, the uh, index finger, I saw that limb, yes, yeah, sometimes imaginary hair whirl. Um, <laughs> the, uh, you, you're not like, you know, you're just, ah, it's a very light kind of thing. There's an opening rather than a pushing. Um, so the um, uh, so that's the crown of the head. Now the knee one is um, there's a lot of different interpretations on this one, and um, it is um, the, I've heard two translations of, of of the term itself. One was a uh, said to be a corruption of uh, uh, nibbana or the Pali word for nirvana. And it was a Chinese uh, transliteration of that. So it, was, so it became uh, rather nibbana, uh, the a Pali term, it was uh, uh, niwan became the, you know, like the enlightenment point. Um, another, which I think is a, probably a little more credible is um, mud pill. It is uh, the uh, the literal translation is mud pill, and that refers to the pineal gland. The pineal gland in uh, Taoist literature is the mud pill, and the mud pill palace is the niwan. And it's at the, in the area of your pineal pituitary and also your sphenoid bone, which is sometimes called the seat of the soul. The sphenoid bone is, is a butterfly or bat shaped bone that extends from temple to temple behind your eyes. And it kind of flies along uh, inside your head and it, unlike other bones, it is, it is fluid, moves around. Sitting on top of the, of it, almost like in the pilot seat, there's something called the sala tersica or Turkish saddle, which pops up from this, this, this butterfly. And sitting on top of this is your pineal gland. And behind it is your, uh, or no, the pituitary glands on the on the on the on the cellulose. The pineal gland is right behind. So anyway, the um, the niwan is considered to be um, the part of your brain where that that is located. It's um, it's also a um, there's a a, a valley between your left and right hemispheres. And um, uh, what do they call that? There's something valley. Anyway, it's uh, there's a, uh, 
uh, you bring your awareness to that. And what happens whenever you go there, your brain goes into resonance. Your brain goes into a heightened state of coherence and you get like this hemispheric synchronization whenever you move to that part of your brain. The, uh, the valley spirit, that's what it called. So the idea, and this is something that's mentioned in the Tao Te Ching too, is to, uh, to embrace the, the valley spirit. And uh, so what we're doing when we go to the Miwan is to actually enter into this, this, this place where the Taoist adepts would go in their meditation to the valley spirit and to be able to create this heightened state of whole brain coherence. And the whole system then would, would move to a higher vibration. So the, um, the, I oftentimes use the term uh, Niwan to, as an external point right there at the, at just, just above the hair whirl, you know, um, but not up to the top of the head, not up to the, not as far up as the Bai Wei, but it's more, a little bit behind it and uh, uh, use it because uh, that's sort of an entry point into the, uh, the Niwan Palace. And it's something that um, Cheng Man Ching had, uh, had illustrated in his book. He, he talked about, about the Niwan and getting that. So I use that as a, as a, a short uh, shorthand for this lengthy explanation that I've just given. But so getting, so by reaching with the crown, you, what happens is when I reach with the crown, there's a tendency to tuck in the chin rather than if I'm reaching from the top of my head, oftentimes you hear it like suspended from a thread from above, there's still a tendency for me to leave my chin hanging out here if I'm, if I'm hanging from this. And what that's doing is it's kinking the hose at the base of my skull. Now that base of the skull, where the, the bottom of the occiput meets the, the neck, that's, uh, that's the jade pillow gate. The jade pillow gate actually is refers to two points to either side of the spine, but I like to, uh, you know, to focus more on the space between, right there where the, at the uh, uh, foramen magnum, the, the big hole where the spine enters into the, uh, into the, into the skull. So, the, so that, that hole there, by opening that up, you permit the cerebral spinal fluid to flow more freely. And that's a lot of fun. And, uh, and it permits your brain to operate at a much higher level, much higher vibration whenever you do that. And you can feel it, you know, if you just kind of kind of kink the hose there, you can feel something's not right, right? <laughs> it, it, it blocks not just cerebral spinal fluid, but, but blood flow into, into the brain. And since the brain is using about 20% of your, your, your resources, whether you're awake or asleep, that, that's a cool thing about the brain. It doesn't matter if you're, if you're doing calculus or if you're snoozing, it's still using about the same amount. And that's because there's this default mode network that is processing way, chattering way in the background, even when you're not occupying your brain to do all kinds of cool stuff. So uh, it, needs its, uh, it needs fuel and oxygen. And so you want to open that up. And so that nourishes the brain, nourishes the nervous system, and it, it's kind of a cool thing. So knowing the distinction between the crown of the head, which is just basically part of the skull, it's part of the, you know, uh, you know the kind of the top back of the head and um, where the occiput, here's your occiput down here, this bone here, and then you have the parietal bones up here. They're split down the middle. The sagittal suture runs down the middle. And then you have these, these bones right here. That's, it. That's your parietal bones. So where your parietal bone meets your occiput, those three bones come together. Uh, that's, that's that soft spot there. That's your, your um, posterior foramen, um, posterior 
What's that? Fontanelle. Fontanelle. Thank you. Posterior Fontanelle at the at the at the hair whirl. That's where those three bones come together, and they're they're still pulsing. I do craniosacral, and it's uh, the 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 bones are still moving, even though they seem like it's one hard helmet. There, it's uh, your 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 bones are pulsing, and they're opening and closing. And uh, it said that you know some uh, Taoist adepts can consciously expand and contract their the bones in their skull so that's 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 kind of cool uh i haven't learned that trick myself but uh uh just knowing that that okay we got this this point here that's at the crown and when i'm talking about the knee one i'm talking about basically the entry point it's an more of a, an energy point that leads us into the the valley spirit and the um, jade pillow palace or the mud pill palace. And then that, and then your pituitary gland, your pineal gland, they have all kinds of really cool functions that uh, we'll talk about some other time. But uh, 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 oftentimes with spiritual and uh, metaphysical overtones. But um, so that's, that's that. So does that, does that help Scott? You have more, more clarification. Oh, yeah. yeah, well, yeah, it helps. It's just the yeah, it's just um, you know, you're saying the Niwan is a spot on the crown, right? So, right, isn't that kind of what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah right. It's, Niwan is, is it's an area. It's an area, crown, right? So, yeah, so right around the crown. Yeah. So one is one is a uh, we're talking about the crown of the head. It's more of a Kind of a barber's term, and the uh, the Niwan is more of a uh, Taoist uh, uh, adept's term for pretty much the same thing, except well, for the crown. Was... The crown is bigger. The Niwan is you know more localized. Okay. Well, why do that... I need to know the difference? You need to know the difference. Yeah. Whenever you're talking about energy, you use Niwan. When you're talking about structure. Talking about bones or you know parts of the skull, you can use crown, but okay. most people can relate to crown, particularly since there's a lot of fuzziness about Niwan. Because other people, you know, the Master Yang says, well, there's a the Yin Niwan and the Yang Niwan, and the the third eye is the is you know is also part of the Niwan. So that's an entry point of the Niwan. And so you have these two points that are opposite each other. And then we get into all kinds of, of fuzziness there. And I'm trying to keep things fairly simple by uh, you know, reducing the terminology down a little bit. Lynn, you got something? Well, I just want to put in a plug for my friend, the by waypoint. Um, and I know that I, I agree with you that if you do it wrong, you can you know lift up your chin and all that. But I got a lot of energetic stuff going zoom zoom zooming out of the by waypoint it's a real sort of a connection for me when i but they i always think about bringing them both up the knee one and the by way right you know sort of connecting with both um and i find out when i'm really moving a lot of stuff that by way is just uh it's like um it's like yeah, it's like Rick Myers party people, you know. <laughs> it's called the hundred meeting place. It's the hundred meeting points. Yeah, there's a lot of party up there. Yeah, yeah. I have no no problem with that at all. I think that's 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 great, yeah. and I, I I agree. But I, I I'm talking about as a uh, as a practice. If mm -hmm. I reach or if I hang from my by by we, um, I I don't get the same effect that I do if I reach from my crown. I think yeah. uh, reaching from the crown opens up the by we. Yes, I would agree with that. Yeah. Okay, so that's okay, cool. that's all I'm saying. So I'm not I'm not I'm not breaking foul on the on on the hundred hundred meeting. <laughs> well, I should hope not, because I, you know, I don't know what I have to do. <laughs> uh, yeah, somebody else had a hand up. Did uh Richard. Um, just thinking about what Scott's question sort of is and the way I'm thinking about it is that 
uh, there's a relationship between pulling the chin in, opening the jade pillow and reaching with the knee one. And they all sort of happen at the same time. Um, and I think that when you're reaching with the knee one, the chin should naturally come in, the jade pillow should naturally open. But I think maybe you just need to be a little aware of that to make sure that that's all happening. I agree. I agree. And do it until it becomes easy. Because it, if, you, if you haven't been doing it, you know, uh, I know for me, it's something I had, I still have to practice. I still have to remind myself not to shoot my chin out, right? So I had to be able to tuck that in so that I can, can lengthen my spine. So, and we talked in you know, one of the earlier classes about, you know, you know, setting up a connection between your knee one and your Wei Lu at, at, in your coccyx and lengthening your spine and opening up the spine, which allows the energy to move more freely up the spine, uh, particularly the, the uh, penetrating vessel. So it um, allows that to go up and then that feeds into the, uh, the knee one, feeds into so that you get this, this energetic connection going from the from perineum all the way up into your brain and into the uh, the knee one. So this is all cool stuff. Um, thank you for uh, for the for your questions and insights and and your experiences. Appreciate it. Okay, so um, want to do something? Yeah, moving on. Let's do a little uh, thing. We'll get as much as we we can in today. What I wanted to do was talk about qualities of energy and. Um, being able to differentiate, because we're talking about getting more and more comfortable with the non-stuff, more and more comfortable with the insubstantial, and be able to create these discernments between one thing and another. And it's all part of one big booyah base anyway, but uh, in, in that there are, by identifying the different parts and kind of teasing them apart, we create energy. We create flow. So, uh, so being able to identify this, uh, these different things, I think helps us to create more of this chi, which then we can use to create our wei chi and, uh, and all that other cool stuff. So uh, the, uh, I mean, when I first started playing around with this stuff, for me, it was just more or less. Those are the two big distinctions that I could make with energy. It's like, you know, just the, when I finally was able to isolate and say, ah, okay, that's what, that's what they mean by chi. There were just more chi or less chi. And that's a great place to start. And I think that, you know, you start there to say, be able to say, oh yeah, there is something there. And I have it more now than I did then and I have it less now than I did this other time and be able to make that, that distinction. So that then we're starting to talk about, you know, volume or chi pressure or whatever. It's like, like the voltage in a, in a system. So once you go beyond that, the next distinction, and this was a huge uh, epiphany for me, was that, oh, yin and yang. It's like, huh. Okay, there's a quality, there's an expansive quality, which is, which is young. And there's a condensing quality, which is yin. And the two are two sides of the same coin. And depending on which you're looking at, because every yin contains a yang, every yang contains a yin. And so there's this, this interweaving, this, interrelationship between them but you if you bring your awareness to it and you identify you know some aspect you can can say yeah there's yin and yang in both but there's more yang right here than there is yin or vice versa and then you start to be able to make these fine distinctions and then from that you can go any number of, of directions and the one I'd like to talk about tonight, if we get if we have time, will be the five elements and how to 
differentiate those, the qualities of those energies experientially. And um, I offer this as, as a uh, kind of a preview of, of, of coming attractions uh, because it's a, uh, you know, some of you will get it faster than others. Some of you already played around with it. Um, but don't worry, we all, you all start somewhere, you know, and for me, it's, it's been a, a 40 year journey, 40 plus year journey trying to figure this stuff out. So uh, there's no rush. You get to uh, take your time and, and, and do it. But just the fact of knowing that there is a way of thinking about this stuff that the Chinese have, have found useful for thousands of years is I think um, you know it's it's worth looking at and seeing if it is useful to you, and really it always comes down to that: is it useful? You know, it's not is this absolutely true or not? It's like no, is this something I can use? So let's uh, start up. And the key to I think to all of this is you crank up enough energy in the system that you can notice these subtle differentiations, which if you're not if your chi is not cranked up, you're uh, you're not going to even notice. So let's uh, let's start with that. So this is the lesson more part of the second part of the program. Oh. Okay, so. Feel the ball of your right foot, set your right knee, spiral down to the left, turn to the right, pick up your left heel and step out to the side. Feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, spiral down to the right and turn to the left. Now your weight's 50-50. You wanna feel the weight spread throughout the foot, but particularly centered at the ball of the foot. And knees are unlocked. You're kind of relaxing down into it. You can spiral left and right a couple of times just to kind of release the hip joints, and allow yourself to kind of sink into that, into your, your stance. You want to get sung. Reach with the crown of your head. Open the jade pillow gate, tuck in the chin. Reach with the elbows. Point with your index fingers and feel the energy. And we'll notice it first as a substantial manifestation. That is your, you start to feel something in your hands, your tingling, pulsing, sense of fullness. If you pay closer attention, you'll notice circulation has increased. If you were to look at your hands now, you would notice that they're considerably redder than they were 30 seconds ago. because the chi leads the blood. So we'll feel, we'll feel that before we start to feel that insubstantial level. But once you give it some time and you invest in just bringing your awareness, feeling inside your body, you start to notice the insubstantial aspects as well. You may notice it as heat. You may feel some radiance. A 
point your index fingers. And just very slowly rotate your forearms, turning your palms forward. Shoulders are relaxed. You're rotating from the elbows, rotating the forearms so the palm stays forward. Take a deep breath and spread the fingers open. And exhale and relax. And slowly rotate the palms back. Rotate the palms forward, rotate the forearms. Very slowly feeling each movement. And feel into your hands. And feel the change that's occurring there. And then rotate back. Feel your elbows, reach with that, reach with the wrists. Bring your arms forward. And continue. Expanding. Opening. And feel that sense of expansion. What we have here is, is a young energy, very expansive. Now bring your hands in, reach from the, set your elbows and bring your forearms in, rounding your arms and feel your arms compressing big ball there. Feel that compressed energy and that's yin. Reach with your elbows, reach with your wrists, open. Feel the yang chi. Reach with the crown of your head. So set your elbows. Bring your hands in. And compress. You feel your space getting smaller as you do this. Relax and feel into that. Bring your hands down. Feel yourself sinking into the floor, into the earth. More and more yin. Very soon.
Touch your elbows, reach with your wrists. Reach with your hands, point your index fingers. Stand upward, reaching, feeling your energy expanding outward in all directions, radiating. Yang. You yourself being fed by the, the, the Yang Chi of the heavens. And relax at the elbows, bring the hands in. Sink, sink. In. Feel yourself. being fed by the yin chi of the earth, consolidating, creating form. Feel under your hands, feel the chi there. But moving on to the different elements. And so we're going to use uh, some Xing Yi postures to illustrate different elements. So feel the ball of your left foot sink into, let the knee sink into the left claw, pick up your right heel and step forward. You want to have it so the heels line up, so it's a narrow stance. You're stepping forward with your right foot, not too far. And then feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee spiral down to the left. Turn. Reach with the right elbow. Bring the hand down. Left hand draws down and feel the heaviness of the arm. But you also want to feel the connection there between the joints are all knitted together. There's a continuous tensegrity in the whole system. Metal energy is short, it's abrupt. It goes, picks a spot and boom, it's there. You're punching with metal. It's like you're punching and you're picking a spot and boom, there it is. It's, but even though you're picking that spot and your the body stops moving, the energy continues to penetrate, continues to move. If I'm punching through here, the energy continues to go out from there, but this is, feel that. So when we talk about metal energy, it's kind of like the effect of say, if you drop a, drop a five pound hammer on the floor, it's like, boom, it just thud. Except for it's knitted together. The five pound hammer, it's just sort of hanging out and it's dropping. This is the whole system aligns with that. So think of uh, an ax chopping through wood. That kind of force, power, abruptness. And step back. Step forward with, uh, sink into your right claw, right leg, pick up your left foot, step out with that. Spiral down to the right, left arm, left elbow, reach with that, reach with the wrist. And sink into your back leg. Reach with the elbows, reach with the fingers. Notice that the arm is rounded. Feel 
feel the 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 power of this like chain mail it's like very strong tough Continue to reach with the crown of your head, tuck in the chin. Feel the poles in opposition. Something that's characteristic of Xin Yi is you feel the hands opposing the feet. Feel the knees and the elbows in opposition. The shoulders and the hips. You feel the right hand opposing the left, the left foot opposing the right. Everything is, your every pole in opposition creates energy and that feeds into the whole system. Step back. I think that's all we're going to get to today on that. So take a deep breath. And disappear the chi. Dissolve that. And just feel in your body. Okay. Grab a seat, we take a couple of questions and comments. Scott. Whoa, that was really wow. <laughs> right. My feet were probably the same color as Valerie's shirt. <laughs> when you had us um, feel their hands before and after the first part, the difference was just, I mean, it was just so, it was so much difference in the energy. It was really cool. Wonderful. And the, um, yeah, and the metal energy, I mean, you could, I could really feel that. That was a very cool. Yeah, I feel like going out and punching a hole in a car or something. You know, just yeah, like... yeah, I, yeah. Before you said feel the power in it, I was like, yeah, wow, I could break this couch in half. <laughs> yeah, it's the uh, yeah, it's 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 something else. Cool. Anybody else? Valerie. This may be just rather obvious, but it was um, just the thought that I had while we were doing this that we tend to think of, uh, well, not we, but um, there's this thought that yin is lesser than yang. I mean, they're definitely different energies, but they're both very powerful. Just because something is yin does not make it weak. Uh, yes, absolutely right. And I, I, that really needs to be pointed out because there's a misunderstanding about yin in um, a lot of people's Tai Chi, they have this idea, oh, I'm just gonna kind of get kind of limp and gooey and that's yin. It's like, no, no, that's, <laughs> that's not it at all. Yin is, mm. and it's, it's um, I think it's no mistake that just about every Tai Chi form is two thirds yin, one third yang. It's the yin is, is definitely the where we gather it in where we mm, we create form which then from that form we can express which is young so it uh, but i think it's a really important point to make there jonathan metal energy is it strikes me as something paradoxical it's like in one sense it's like this heavy intention of you know power and just you know draw on the other hand it's like if you're holding at all, you have to release all muscle tension for it to have its effect. So it's almost like these two things. It wants this very heavy, powerful force you're, you're holding on to, and yet you, you, 
you, you have to let go, release all tension for it to work, like a guillotine dropping down. So it, it just seems more complex than like wood energy expansion or water even, you know, just simple yin and yang here. I, I don't know, is, 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 there, well, is it a more complex? Is, I, is release muscular tension, but you replace it with tensegrity. So it's not, it's not this, right? It's right. It's, it's, it's this, right? It's, it's where the muscles are relaxed, but right. the tissue is pulled taut. And right. that creates the, uh, creates the energy flow. Right, I guess it's those two things that, that the muscles really have to be relaxed because you're not gonna have that drop without that. Any kind of muscle tension is gonna put a break on the metal. Right. So I'm just wondering for you, are, are the two things working at once or is it all just fused into metal energy? Like, you don't think, you're not thinking, oh, release tension and heavy, you know, I, I don't know. Well, I'm just- it's Real important to remember that metal is not just dropping. You right. can lift too. Ah, it's, well, that's helpful. So, you know, about that. This, this can be, you know, think of um, metal, uh, not just as a sledgehammer, but can also be like, like an awl, you know, where you're, you know, right. You, you can punch a hole. A stiletto is also metal. You know, well, you that's can, interesting because you know. again, you'd want to pull the brakes off of even reaching up. I hadn't thought of that as it's easier to think of not having the brakes on as you're going down. You know, have a real drop, but the, the, wouldn't the want tension going up either. It, it's it's abrupt and and connected. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, yeah. That's okay. The key. Dennis, you had something. Yeah, I just wanted to say that open and expansion, it was like, you'd stop and I, it, the sensation, I was still expanding. It was just a, such a nice sensation or contracting. It was, your body stopped moving, but you still had the sensation of motion. Of motion. It was just, just such a nice sensation. Terrific. Good, 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 good. Sandy. Yeah, for me, the, the first part was really cool for me. I um. My face, I felt it in my face. I felt like I was giving myself a face massage when we were doing the different postures. I could feel like my jaw tingle. Mm -hmm. And then when we went higher, I could feel like the back, kind of the, the sides and the back here. So it was like, I just felt like everything with my hands, my face was just doing this. I could feel it in my face everywhere. Like, beautiful, beautiful. I think, you know, I, I particularly did that, that exercise to, to show that it doesn't require an elaborate, complex qigong exercise to to get to get it going. You know, you can just do it just by <laughs> rotating your forearms, and you can create this this tremendous qi flow. It has to do with bringing mindfulness to the feeling, mm -hmm. so consciously feeling, and and then you're able to generate this 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 qi flow. And even very simple motions or even non-motions can produce a tremendous energy. Cool, anybody else? Okay, we're gonna call that a wrap. Um, thank you all so much. Love you all. Great. Thank you, Bye. Thank you, Maria. Thanks, Maria. Thanks, Maria. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. You bet. Uh, have a Bye -bye. good night, all. <laughs>